This tutorial is on preparing your unmounted panel for painting. I'm going to be using a acrylic gesso that has been um, mixed with water to change its viscosity. It's not extremely runny, but it's also not very thick, so it's it's quite loose, but it's not really loose. You need a good bristled brush that doesn't have any hard parts, and then your panel and sandpaper. So first thing I'm going to do is sand my panel down so it's nice and smooth. First I used a coarser sandpaper, now I'm using a finer sandpaper. Then I'm going to wipe off all the, the um, powder from the sanding. And it's probably not a bad idea to wear a mask while you're doing this because the masonite um, material when you sand it becomes like a dust. But I'm going to make sure that I wipe my panel extremely clean because if there's any brown masonite particles it will mix with the gesso so there it's nice and clean. So when you gesso you're going to gesso a number of coats with opposing directions. So I'm going to mix up my gesso again to make sure it's mixed well. Take my brush, mix it some more and then just apply my gesso and my first goal is just to get the gesso on the panel and then once I've done that I'm going to make sure all of my brush strokes go in just one single direction. And apply the gesso making sure too that I don't have any lumps or um, anything. Next, once that's dry I'm going to sand the gesso that I just put on and smooth out that coating of gesso. And I'll wipe it down again and apply another coat, this time with my brush strokes going in a perpendicular direction to the coat I put on previously. The second coat can be a little bit thicker than the first coat. So you can see that it's going on a little bit thicker, plus the masonite isn't absorbing the gesso quite so much. smooth it out again looking for any chunks and if this is where if you had hard bristles this is where it would be a problem because the bristles would create uh, gouges and lines in your gesso. The gesso just to describe to you is doing a couple of things for the panel. First of all it's keeping the acid in the wood away from the paint and also it's allowing you to place down a white ground that will be luminous versus the brown of the panel that's already there. So then you need to sand the second coat so that it's smooth again. And uh, here you don't need to use a coarse grit, you can use a finer grit. So sand it all down smooth and then go ahead and apply your third coat of gesso. Now this coat of gesso again can be a little bit thicker than the second. You just want to make sure that you remember to uh, make your brush strokes perpendicular to the ones that you had on the panel in the second coat. So go through, apply your gesso and smooth it out real smooth, and then let that dry. The number of coats of gesso you put on the panel is a bit of a personal preference. I would always suggest at least three coats of gesso to protect the painting from the acid in the wood, but some people put as many as ten coats of gesso on a panel or on a canvas even. As long as you sand between each layer, then that can help you to build up a smooth surface. Sometimes you don't want a smooth surface, sometimes it is what you want. But the number one goal of the gesso is really to protect the substrate, which in this case is the panel, from um, the oils in the paint, and also to protect the painting from the acid in the wood. When you're done with your gessoing, you're going to clean up. As you see, I use plastic underneath where I was gessoing. It's such a great idea because when I'm ready to clean up, that acrylic gesso is water soluble. Just going to use my atomizer to spread some water around and then clean it up with a rag. Make sure you clean your brush really, really well because if you have that brush dedicated to gessoing and you don't clean it, it will get hard in some places and then the gesso will get streaky and you'll have texture to your painting when you don't necessarily want that texture. 